James Messier, y'all. You can catch me today for Monist. Shout out to the Monist gang. Okay, cool. If it's the first time you're here, please hit the subs button. Roll to a thousand subscribers. Let's go. So today I'm going to speak on the science of anxiety and the practical exercises that you can do to get over it. Anxiety is a natural response to stressful, dangerous situations. We have evolved to have anxiety stress responses to help us actually. Because stress keeps us sharp, improves our memory, plays a role in keeping us alert and it's such a powerful motivator. The stress anxiety response you dislike right now is the reason why society is the way it is today. Because it helped our ancestors cope with dangerous situations. But however, consequently, our brain evolved to function primarily for survival. So whether whatever you're anxious about is true or not, if the brain sees danger, it will release anxiety hormones. This is a good thing when there's actual danger and it forces you to act in a manner to preserve yourself. However, this is a bad thing when there's no danger and those hormones are released for a future exam, future event, or have an anxiety response on overdrive that leads to panic attacks. So it's worth learning how to get this system to work for you and not against you. The world spends about $42 billion a year to treat this mental illness. Okay, cool. So let's start by talking about different structures of the brain. The amygdala is the part of the brain responsible for fears and controls the fight or flight response. It crudely speaking and governs anxiety. However, the part of the brain that crudely makes all your decisions is called the frontal cortex. And its job is to review or overwrite the amygdala responses to any event to see if they're necessary or unnecessary. When you get into a dangerous situation, blood leaves the frontal cortex into the amygdala. So as blood is leaving from the frontal cortex to the amygdala, the amygdala's freeze flight responses is the primary action that you end up taking. The amygdala tends to literally hijack the, your brain into anxiety or anger responses and it limits you to access to the logical reasoning empathetic part of your brain and this process is commonly called the amygdala hijack it's useful in the event that you see a snake and because you don't want to use the parts of your brain that needs to think about what to do is it really a snake or is it just a rope or a stick on the ground instead that part of the brain that's logical shuts down and the amygdala completely hijacks your brain and you just jump up, which is good for self-preservation. But sometimes the anxiety responses may feel out of control. So what are the solutions? First, you need to consciously have coping techniques on hand, which I'll speak about on this video. Olivia Reem cites a study shown, showing that women in poor areas have higher risk of anxiety than women in richer areas. You may listen to this and say, well, duh. But more interestingly, Women in poor areas with coping mechanisms on hand did far much better with anxiety than women who didn't in general. People who have been in wars or experienced trauma and had coping skills which I'll discuss in this video on hand lived a far more healthy life unlike those who didn't and just got consumed with their trauma or that specific event. So. These exercises that I'll touch on are done to restructure the neural pathways of your brain as your brain is naturally made to rewire itself all the time and it changes depending on how you use it. This is called neuroplasticity because if you change how you think, you change the connections within your brain and you change the structuring of your brain. So you've already taken the first step which is having awareness because you can now recognize a amygdala hijack in someone else who may be reacting aggressively towards you and realize that perhaps responding in the same aggressive manner may not be the best way to go about things. You can also realize a amygdala hijack within yourself and do the following exercises to get your frontal cortex to be in charge again. Cool. So the first exercise is if you're continuously fighting with anxiety Get a journal and write down your emotions as they happen. This is a common therapeutic practice called making the implicit explicit, making vague subconscious programming to be a transparent specific emotion. 
Matthew Lieberman, a psychologist at UCLA, studied brain scans and shows that writing in journals reduces activities on the amygdala, giving you more control of your thoughts. Research shows that simply labeling an emotion disrupts the amygdala's normal functioning and decreases negative reactions. It's important to write down though and not type it out. I know this exercise helped a lot of people within our book club. A cousin to this exercise is having a amygdala hijack audit. If you have consistent amygdala hijacks and you are known for overreacting to things, then when something serious happens, log it into our amygdala hijack audit journal. You will discover that after time looking at your logins within your journal, you will notice that you do not have random anxiety attacks, but you have specific triggers and once you know what those triggers are, it's easier to work from there and be conscious about it. Cool. Speaking about being conscious of thoughts, triple board certified neuropsychologist Dr. Judy Ho came up with a, with a term called cognitive diffusion to disempower anxiety. Basically, we tend to think from our thoughts and assume automatically that they are true, but we don't look at our thoughts as an external event from you. So if you get the thought saying I'm unattractive, instead of thinking from that thought and accepting it as true and making it a true reflection of self-identity, think of it as an external event and decide if we're keeping this thought or not. Kinda like when someone slides into your DMs, you decide if you're going to reply to it or not. This reminds me of an exercise I used to do that trains you on how to control your thoughts as it makes you conscious of all your thoughts. The exercise was that when a thought comes into mind, consciously think using specifically these two words, I accept or I reject the thought. So whenever a negative thought came into mind, I would say out loud, I reject. Whenever a positive scenario came into mind, I'll say out loud, I accept. If you can do this repeatedly for three months, you will become more conscious of the thought patterns that occupy your mind and I guarantee you think more positively. Cool, so the next exercise I'll talk about is a must whether you suffer from anxiety or whether you don't but at all times you must have a gratitude list where you write at least 10 things you're grateful for every single day. I'll do a video on the neurology of gratitude list and the research behind it sometime in the future. But this exercise is a must and in my experience, the best way to alter the way you think and make joy your default setting because as time passes, you express gratitude automatically, which is extremely useful for anxious people who tend to tear themselves apart and always point at the tyrannical side of themselves. Gratitude list will teach you how to pick the positive sides of yourself and in life in general. Moving on to the next exercise. If you have had a traumatic event happen to you, and that is a source of anxiety, then seriously write down a formal proper letter to your offender, to your parents, it could be a dead person. Write down a letter you never that you will never send for your own closure. This exercise helps you to express your needs and wants without expecting any change and it allows you to express bundled up emotion. This is a common therapeutic practice. However, a better version of this exercise is if you write down to the universe or to God or to the divine or to the great architect, where you write down a letter of an alternative reality where you just focus on the good, where you write down in detail how you like to live how you like to feel using your five senses, what you see, what you touch, what you hear. As that lays a new program down into your subconscious mind. Always remember, worrying is just negative goal setting within the future. Because the future has not happened yet. Confront your anxiety. James Mancini, you can catch me at Derek for Monis. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you grabbed any value from it, please subscribe on the road to a thousand subscribers. Gratitude.